to yet another quick win. Perez is in desperate trouble again. Down he goes. He's done it again. He stopped the fight and Prince Nassim Hamed is now king. Prince Nassim Hamed the young man who calls himself a legend at the age of just 22. Certainly we have marveled at his speed, winced at his punching power, and celebrated his showmanship in and out of the ring. But the cold truth remains that to prove yourself truly a legend in boxing, you have to crack it in the American market. And that is the next big challenge. Prince Nassim Hamid is uh, going to be a big star in the United States. They don't really know him there yet. But uh, in my uh, broadcasting career, you've got to go back to the 60s and... Muhammad Ali to find anyone that has this kind of flamboyance. They're going to love him in the States, so this is a big stepping stone for him, too. When you fight a tough kid from Puerto Rico that's undefeated, it could be a test. This is a step up for Nassim. I think they'll really love him in the States. High praise there from Bob Sheridan, the man they call the Colonel in American boxing circles. And the Colonel and the rest of the American Roadshow is in town here in this red-hot arena in the Newcastle Arena tonight because Prince Nassim Hamid gets that chance to take another giant step forward and impress the American public. The second defense of his WBO World Featherweight title coming tonight against the Puerto Rican Daniel Alisea. It's being shown coast to coast in the United States and it tops another superb bill on Sky Sports. And the Prince wishes it to be known, he is ready. I've got to show them Americans that there's a Brit, there's a, a British Arab, I should say, uh, in Britain from Sheffield. Uh, what's ready basically to take on the world um, and as I told them before the Americans when you look in my eyes looking at a man ready to cane the world many things like this in Newcastle. They don't see many things like this in Las Vegas. <laughs> the Prince is walking from here. Let's do it. Even uh, Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard ever tried anything quite like this. Not to everybody's taste in professional boxing, it must be said. But this man is all about showmanship and theatre. 
and he is a ticket seller and he has caught the public's imagination and woe betide any fighter who tries to make this kind of ring entrance who can't fight this fellow can that's right but one man just looking who is enjoying this entrance very much is alicia he's dancing in the corner lots of big smiles so i think he's enjoying the whole atmosphere here Both of them used to very short fights, an average of three and a half rounds per fight each. disappointing the Newcastle crowd's response I'm afraid to the Puerto Rican national anthem which was observed with less than reverence ladies and gentlemen in attendance boxing fans joining us across the UK on Sky Sports and sports fans joining us around the world we welcome you to the Newcastle arena here in beautiful Newcastle England as it is time for the main event of the evening. And it's all brought to you by Frank Warren's Sports Network and Don King Productions as sponsored by MBC and Adidas. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Valparso, Supervisor at ringside John Montano, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the stewards in charge, Nipper Reed and Bob Green. Keeper at the bell, Albert Kelleher. Judges at ringside scoring this bout. 
Rafael Lopez, Victor Salomon, and Giuseppe Tondaro. And introducing to you our referee in charge, working in this, his 40th world title bout, introducing Raul Caiz. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's showtime! With the WBO featherweight championship of the world scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger of my left, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing red, white, and blue trunks, fighting out of and representing Santurce, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at eight stone, 11 and three quarter pounds, or 125 and three quarter U.S. pounds. Here is the former amateur champion who is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 15 wins, no losses, 13 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his first attempt at a world title. Please welcome the undefeated WBO number one featherweight contender, introducing Daniel Pepino. opponent across the ring on my right is the colorful defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner entering the ring wearing gold trunks with black trim he is hailing from his hometown of Sheffield England and proudly representing his heritage of Yemen his weight is the same as his opponent eight stone 13 and three quarter pounds a 125 and three quarter US pounds his outstanding unbeaten record includes 21 wins, no losses, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his second defense of his title. Please welcome one of boxing's young sensations. Here is the one and only and one of a kind. Raul well, while that was going on, Prince Nassim Hamed was trying to taunt Alisea about what he was about to do to him. Remember this fight for the first time ever. Prince Nassim Hamed being shown live in the United States. The boxing fraternity there have heard all about him, but your average sports fan certainly hasn't. This is his chance to impress them and maybe get all the talk going about a big fight with the likes of a Barrera or a, a Zuma Nelson. But remember, last time out, he went in 35 seconds. Prince Nassim, the fourth fastest win in world title history against Saeed Lawal. What has Alisea got to offer? Good enough to be a world champion, junior champion as an amateur. Nassim is always looking to throw punches from unusual angles. There's been talk in the build-up to this of him throwing a secret punch that he's been working on. Two very good left hands from him there. Big factor in the fight is whether Alessia can take a shot. Anyone who fights Prince Nassim will need that quality if they're to beat him. Durability and resilience because he does hit by all accounts like a middleweight even though he's a featherweight. Alessia also needs to be able to react very quickly because the punches from Hamid took all sorts of angles very quickly. So Alessia has to be able to react. He has to read what Hamid is going to do. Remember even a battle-hardened fighter like Steve Robinson, who had a several world title fights, could barely lay a glove on Prince Nassim. Alessia covering up very well, getting his arms up well to try and block those punches from whatever angle. A right hand gets through from Alisaia. He did catch Nassim with one there. 
Good right over the top, though, from Nassim. Well, I see, keeping his hands up quite well. That's very important, the defence. Just as Nazim went to throw his left, he got caught on Alassia's right. Good fast right hand from Nassim. Alassia has taken the punch as well so far. Nassim is talking to him as usual. He's had some criticism from some sections of the media for trying to humiliate opponents in the past. Thin line between psychological warfare and tastelessness, of course. But Alisea looks full of ambition here and belief. Yes, and certainly he's he's not psyched out in any way. Good right, right hand, hand again. Oh, he's got him, he's got him down. Nessie is put down by a right hand. It was only a flash knockdown, but he'll have to take a mandatory eight count. Down for the first time in his career. What about this in the first round? He wasn't so elusive there. Waving Alisea in. Well, this is the questions we want asked. What is Hamed like when he's getting hit? And he went down. So this is a very different fight now. We know that Alasia can can get to him. Well, Alasia might have heard about the reputation, but he's taking no notice of it. What about that? Alasia puts Nassim Hamed down for the first time in his career. Flash knockdown, really. But how much has that dented Hamed's confidence? We thought this might be a tricky fight for him, and it shapes that way. And a good punch there, good long right hand. You see the hands are right down, catches it again, long spearing right hand to the chin. And again, just as he was getting away from that one, that one didn't seem to have the full power in it. But look at that one, that one did. He took that one quite well, Hamed, but there was more to come. That one just pushed him over. There you see it, wonderful punch. You see where the hands were there. Alessia nice and tight with his defense and oh good no. reactions. Alessia who says he's looked at a lot of videos of Nassim Second Hamed. He spotted round. weaknesses and he says Two. tonight he will expose them. Has he already started to do that? Second round. Well, this is the most interesting Prince Nassim Hamed fight. Well, I'd say ever already and we've only had a round of it round two Alisea in these stripes and this is where you wonder what's happening in Hamid in his mind is this confidence starting to go can he keep the confidence up Alisea's rangy long arms and again I'm not seeing he's getting caught more tonight than I think I've seen him caught in probably 10 fights Got through with a right hand, but Alisea is showing good resilience so far. Every time Nassim lands, he just takes the punch. He looks a real hard nut, doesn't he? He really does. He looks stronger. But Hamed come back well there with a couple of nice loose punches that really seem to land heavily on Alisea. The Prince is used to seeing fighters fall apart when he lands with his heavy artillery. But Alisea, so far anyway, hasn't done this. And what's making this fascinating is that Prince Nassim Hamed is being asked questions that we haven't seen before. He's caught by a right uppercut. And that almost limbo dancer-style defense of his is being put to the test. But often the head movement like that is it's very difficult to get out of the way of all of the punches. He's got to try and get his hands of Hamed here. Just switching orthodox for a moment there, Hamed. Solid right hand there. Oh, left hook, and down goes Alisea. There's the answer. And he's in a bad way on very unsteady legs. It was a left hook that did it in the second round. And Prince Nassim reasserts himself. He looked a very heavy right hand, then that little short left hook. He went down heavily there. Bad moments by Alisea. Can his head clear? Can he get through this? This is a vital last 45 seconds, another right hand, has his legs splayed in the corner, needs to get the gloves up. The final bell for this round cannot come soon enough for Alisea, who lands a very good left hook of his own. Under half a minute left in this round. Nassim looking 
continue to build on that breakthrough. Knocked down in both rounds so far. Can be right to hand left, and I don't think he'll get up from that. It's called off. The fight is over. The fight is over. There'll be no count. He's won it in round two. The ninth time he's won in round two. And that was Hamed's answer to suffering the first knockdown of his career. The finish really was chilling and frightening. And Alisaia is still down. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains his WBO featherweight championship against a young fighter who arrived with a lot of belief, who put him on the floor. But Hamed, give him credit, there was the answer. That's right, Alessia asked Hamed them questions, the ones we've all wanted to know. Hamed answered them fantastically. Very good power punching, found the angles, and really when he went down, he went down very heavily. Really does carry some power in his fists. Alessia managed to land more punches on Hamed, certainly than Steve Robinson did on the whole of the eight rounds those two fought. It was only two rounds, but what an interesting two rounds they were. They certainly were. Alessia really came out to, to have a fight, wasn't overawed, took the fight to Hamed, hurt Hamed, put him over, and it looked as if Hamed may have a, a lot more in this fight than he was bar going to bargain for. But Hamed answered the questions fantastically, he came back, beautiful punches and very heavy hands. This is how it finished. It was a two-punch combination. Look, he just gets the rhythm in the shots. The, the left, the right comes up, and then the following left. All the momentum in this punch, a nice rhythm. But also, Alessia caught him there, but he still had enough to land that left hook. And look how heavily he goes down. They were hard, hard punches. He's now floored 20 of the 22 opponents he's fought, Prince Nassim Hamed. He scored 38 knockdowns already in his career. Only two men have gone the distance with him. But what do we read by the fact that he was put on the floor? Well, you know, people like um, even Ali was put on the floor, wasn't he, by Henry Cooper and Sonny Banks of early course, on. Nothing, nothing wrong with that as long as you get up and win. Certainly not with the style that Hamid has when his hands are very low. He relies on, on reactions. And you know, he got caught. He got caught some decent punches. He went down, but he got straight back up and he was okay. And then to come back and knock his opponent out in that fashion, obviously, you know, it tells a great deal. And there was questions to be answered. He answered them so well there. He said he'd win in round three. He did it in round two. But it was not the usual formality for him. There were bad moments in that fight. And it uh, be interesting to hear what he says about all of that, the knockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 46 seconds of round number two. Our referee in charge, Raul Caiz, stops the contest. He's won about a way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and still the WBO featherweight champion of the world, Prince Nassim Mohammed. Newcastle fans, Enjoyed that. Hamed fights do tend to be short, but they are on the spectacular side. There'll be talk now, more talk, about a match with Marco Antonio Barrera, the brilliant Mexican. I must say I'd steer pretty clear of him. Not necessarily because Hamed would lose the fight, but it is extremely dangerous, of course, for anybody who fights him. And uh, what about Hamed against the veteran Azuma Nelson, who's recently defended his super featherweight title. Yes, Ladies great, and gentlemen, great fight and prospect, but you've got to put him in with anybody. Colin McMillan, the British featherweight champion, would certainly be among those towards the front of the queue. He's here tonight working for radio and will be pushing his case. But Hamed has successfully defended the WBO featherweight championship he won from Steve Robinson for a second time. And I'm sure the American audiences are going to be very impressed with that. We'll try to get some uh, American reaction for you before we go off the air tonight as to what they might have made of that. Our colleagues from Showtime, the big uh, cable network in the United States, showing this fight. They're the people who show Mike Tyson over in the States. Wasn't in the script for Hamid to go down, that's for certain. But he got up and how he produced a finish. 
In just a moment or two, we'll get his version of events when he speaks to Gary Norman. No signs either of the problems with the uh, right hand that he suffered earlier on. Here he is with Gary. Naz, strong, two rounds. Naz, let me tell you, awesome power. You stopped a very dangerous opponent there, and you answered a few questions as well. To tell you the truth, I felt so good in there, but when he hit me with a good shot, I didn't even see the shot. But to tell you the truth, I got back up, know where my feet were, and when I plant my punches, see, I'm just too strong. When they, when they connected and I put my per preciseness together, my, ac my accuracy, it just it connected beautifully. And I hit him, I told you, when I hit him, they're going down from Allah. They're getting knocked out from Allah. Many people have said, out. many people have said they wanted to get you hit on the chin. What did it feel like when you went down for it the first good. time? It was beautiful. It was good. It was nice to taste, a nice, good shot by a good, very, very good fighter, undefeated. But as you see my heart and my power and Allah behind me, I got up, I planted my punches, planted my feet. Allah Akbar, I just hit him so hard. He weren't getting up from that last shot. You saw it yourself. When you need oh, yeah. to, you just pull one of those sucker punches out and it just stops them dead in their tracks. Just stops them in the tracks, as you say. I hit him so hard, especially the second time. I put my punches together and I just, boom, there you go. Now, Showtime were here. That's going to go coast to coast in America. Yeah. It was very important for you to look good. To tell you the truth, I didn't think I looked as good as I could have looked. The finishing knockdowns and everything like that was beautiful. I knocked him and I hit him with some very, very good shots. But I could have boxed better than that. I could have not got hit at all. And I normally never get hit. But what the hell? I got hit with a good shot. My heart's with me. Allah's with me. I got up. I planted my feet. I hit him so hard. That's why I'm never, ever going to get beat, Gary. I'm never going to get beat. Full stop. I, I refuse to lose. Allah will never make me lose. I will never lose. Full stop. What would you like to do now? Pardon? What would you like to do now, fight-wise? What's next? I want to fight any of them. I want to go to the... I, I don't want to... I want to go to the States. I want to fight in England. I want to box the best fighters in the world. I'm the best fighter in the world. I'm going to knock Barrera out. Um, I'll knock all of them out. Azuma Nelson. They know the punch path. After seeing that fight, they know. I got hit, got up, took him out. I, I predicted the second round, the third at first, and then I changed my mind to the second round, and I gave him a good beating. You're right, I heard you in the dressing room, you changed from three to two. Frank Warren, that went to America. Is there a possibility who could fight in America next? There's a strong possibility, but we've got to talk over the weekend, and I'll be talking to the Showtime people and to Don King, and we'll decide what we're going to do. But, you know, you just see the, the best fighter, I think, honestly, that we produce. He proved, if he's hurt, he's an even more dangerous fighter. He got caught with a good shot, went down, got up half a line, and knocked the guy out. Absolutely pole him. I ain't losing that belt. In many ways, it's, it's, good, it's good to see them get Everybody tested like that. Everybody wanted to see it happen. Well, you've seen it happen, and you've seen him get up. He thought he's in there with a good fighter, a very good fighter, big heart, and, okay. you know, in the lion's den. And the kid took it, took the fight to Melissa and four miles in. But there ain't, nobody, there ain't nobody who can take that power. There ain't nobody around, I promise you. There's a rumor that he could fight on the Tyson on the card. I mean, you know, two rounds. He's, you know, he's, he's still ready to go. When could we see him go across the waters of the States? Six weeks, eight weeks? I don't know. We, we, it's something we're talking about. We, we'll let you know next week. All right, we'll watch this space with interest. Last yeah, word with you. This belt here, I ain't losing, so I ain't going to lose this belt. You see this nice belt? I'm never, ever going to lose. Blatantly, I ain't losing nothing. What you need is a few more. They'll come. Thanks, lads.